Hello my friends. Welcome back with Painting with Harold. And tonight I thought we'd have a little fun. Uh, we're going to do a little cheating tonight. But before we get started, I have a 16 by 20 canvas that is covered in a thin, even coat of liquid clear. Liquid clear. That is correct. You heard me right. A very thin coat. Liquid clear, if it is applied too heavy, will run off your canvas. It will drip, and your whole painting will drip. So it is very, very light coat. The colors we're going to use tonight, titanium white, phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, mountain mix, van dyke brown, dark sienna, sap green, cad yellow, yellow ochre, indian yellow, and the evil bright red. Now, the reason I put liquid clear on the canvas is I had a guy contact me through Facebook and he asked me could you paint liquid clear on a white canvas and if so when would you want to do it and I tried to explain to him as best I could that if you use liquid clear any color you apply to the canvas it's not going to wash out and it's not going to blend in with the liquid white if you put liquid white on it. So therefore, any color you apply to the liquid clear on the white canvas, you're going to have to, if you want to thin it down or tone the color down, you'll have to mix a little white in as you paint. Uh, your colors, I mean, they do show up a lot better. They stay vibrant and I mean rather than me sit here and try to explain it I'll grab a brush, a two inch brush and we'll just jump right in. We'll go into our phthalo blue first and we'll pick up just a little on the two inch brush. We'll tap it in real good and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about right off. I mean you, you'll see it. This this thalo blue is gonna it's gonna be so much different than if you had the uh, liquid white up here because it's just not mixing with liquid white. Now the one thing it will do is it'll mix with the liquid clear and your brush will start losing color and it'll look it'll look a lot like it's mixing but it's not it's it's just losing paint off the uh, brush as you apply it. And you just very loosely come up with the little egg strokes, just very loosely, and apply, apply that phthalo blue all the way across your canvas, about like so. Just very, in different spots, your pressure. Because you can already see, I hope the camera's picking it up. See how streaky it looks when you're using the uh, clear? It's not, it's not blending in with the white. So therefore, it's it's looking, it's looking a little streaky. And a lot of that had to do with the brush strokes I was using. But to fix it, we're just going to come back up, and we're just going to. Go over it again with the egg strokes. We're going to work those those colors right into the fabric, just like so. Then we'll come down. We'll turn the brush sideways, and we'll let that be our color for now. Then we will go into a little more and tap it on the brush. And we're going to come straight in 
from the bottom just straight across and straight up and the further we go up the more the more we start running out of paint now we're not we're not blending with the white because we don't have any up here yet so all we're doing is losing paint off the brush that's all we're doing and we'll get a little more for the other side let's pick up a little more than that all right and we'll come across tap it all the way into my brush. There we go. Now, all right, pull it straight in because still water lies flat. And we still want to leave that little area of light in the middle because uh, even though we don't have white there, we're still going to we're still going to try to leave us a sheen of light across the water. Since we don't have any paint there, the white canvas should show through. So, let's see if that happens. Alright, we'll start lightly blending across. Start pulling that color. You can see how it's how it's mixing with the liquid clear, and it's because it's still wet. You can still move paint, and that's a good thing. You know that you can you're still allowed to move it. Now you are losing that that blendability, but you are not sitting here trying to rub paint on a dry canvas that would that would cause you some pain and stiffness big time all right just like that now if you have a problem seeing how your colors are doing you can get up and take a step or two back because these paintings are not meant to be viewed off the tip of the nose they are meant to be viewed you know, from a little distance. I wouldn't say across the room, but, you know, at least six foot or so. All right. Yeah. Just like that. We have us a nice sky, and we have us a nice area for water. And we'll put that brush in the thinner for now. And next we will... I tell you what, let's do some, let's do some clouds today with the with the one inch brush and we'll pull us out a little white just pull straight through it load the brush up real good and we'll come up here and we want to Keep the brush moving. Just keep this brush moving. That's all you want to do. Just keep it moving. I'm going to put us a big old clown up there. We'll go back. We'll pick us up a little more blue. I mean, I'm sorry, a little more white. We'll come back in here. Just keep the brush moving. Making little circles. We'll run this on off. About like so. That's all we need. And we'll pick us up a little more. And we'll come on this side and just keep the brush moving. And come under, give it a little body. Just keep the brush moving. That's all you want to do, just keep the brush moving. 
come out like so. And let's just put us in a little, couple little loose clouds way back off in the distance. Just a little, just little loose ones that sit up there and dance around. And then we will drop that brush in the bucket. We'll pick us up a clean, dry, two-inch brush, and we'll come across and just barely blend out the bottom using that top corner. And the reason you want to use that top corner is because if you bring that brush up here like this, it's so hard to see where you're at. You're kind of left guessing. Whereas if you use the top corner, you can see exactly where you're at. And you just come across the bottom and blend it right out. We we'll don't have to blend these just yet. And then very lightly come in and fluff up your cloud just real lightly and then two hairs and some air just come across and then here you can just hypnotize these they're so they're just off in the distance little little far away clouds that are just up there lingering about just like so you know, just like that we have us a nice little cloud or two in our sky today. Now we are going to, I'm going to knock a little of this paint out. It picked up a very little of the blue. So I'm going to knock a little of that color out, but we're going to save this brush for now. <coughs> and we're going to go pick us up a knife. Now for everybody that don't like using a knife, uh, believe me, I understand. Using a knife is, uh, this thing is intimidating. And for people whose hand shakes, sometimes it's not good. Uh, getting used to the amount of pressure you have to use with it's not good. Now I have done a couple paintings that, uh, where you can make mountains without a brush. And you can, you can see those on, uh, on my YouTube channel. And also tonight, I wish I, wish I would have uh, showed you before I'd done it. This canvas, when I got it out of the pack, it was just floppy loose. I mean, it was, I had to tighten it. And if you don't know how to tighten a canvas, I have a video <laughs> on my YouTube channel that shows how to tighten a, a canvas before you paint on it. Because you want a good tight canvas to paint on. You don't want it all loose and floppy. And, uh, that's just not very effective. All right, we're going to come up here, and we're going to come across, put our color, and we're just going to make us a couple little, couple little spots up here on top, and we'll pull that down, and we'll kick it out. like so. We'll come out. We'll kick us out another little point here. Now this mountain tonight is going to be, I'm going to do it a little different than I normally would. So you will get to see uh, another way of doing mountains. Uh, it's, it's a uh, it's not real hard to do. It's just uh, something you'd have to get used to doing. But with that said, we'll uh, we'll work on it together. And I'll try to go I'll try to go as slow as I can with it, so you can you can see the uh, procedure. All right, now let's come let's come out to about right here. We'll make us another little peak right in there. About like so. And anytime you start building a mountain, when you're first building it, 
All you really want to worry about is your outside edge. You want to come up here and, and just push this color in the, in the canvas. You know, get it, really get it in there. You, I, I wish you could hear or see actually how hard I am pushing this color into this canvas. Because once you get it, once you get it stained, it's in there. All right, then we'll come out. Let's see. Let's come in here with one more. We'll bring it up. I like so. We'll bring it over just like that. And we'll bring this out just like that. Now you can hear how hard I'm scraping this canvas. And these canvases are tough. I mean, you're not going to hurt it. Bottom like so, should be all we need. All right, let me wipe my knife off. We'll lay it to the side. Now I'm gonna pick this two inch brush up that we used to blend out the bottom of the clouds. And it's got just a little bit of paint on it, not much at all. And I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna start pulling this color out. Now remember, we're working on top of liquid clear here. So the only white we got right now up here is what little bit we just pulled through that cloud and if we end up having to you know use some white or if we need some white we'll have to uh, we'll have to add it from our palette because the only thing we got right now that's going to fade this color down is losing it on the brush that is it We don't have a we don't have a color up here now to to use. That's one of the things I like about liquid white when you do use it, it it helps you get rid of some dark colors at times. It helps lighten them down. Alright, we'll come in here. And these little little peaks, we'll pull them down. But we getting a we getting this canvas stain pretty good. So just want to pull as much of this paint down as you can, because that'll help with the next step. And now with that said, we are going to do it a little different tonight. do anything we can to to get some help with this knife because uh, I don't want to sound cliche or you know a wore out statement but when you when you get to where you could use that knife there's there's just about nothing you can't if you get to where you can make these mountains with it I'm telling you you can you can do anything you want to with it. you can make trees, you can make cabins, whatever you want to do with it, once you learn the, how to control it. And all it is is practice. That, that's all it is. Lots of practice. Alright. Now, what we're going to do tonight that is a little different is we are going to pull our white out flat like we always do. 
get us a little roll on the knife. Pull it out as flat as you can get it. Okay. Get that little roll of paint. My hand's cramping up tonight for some reason. I'm sorry about that, guys. Alright, now, what we're going to do tonight is when we come up to our, our peak here, we're going to touch like we always do. But right there, we're going to well, I guess I need to close that gap. All right, we get that little gap like that, we're going to stop. All right. Then we're going to pick us up another little roll. And we're going to come right up here to the top again. And we're just going to very gently want to leave some some gaps in here. All right, now we'll take some more white and mix it with a little phthalo blue. Get our shadow color. And I know what you're thinking. Why are we getting a shadow color already? Well, because we're gonna we're gonna do it a little different tonight. All right. We want to use that little that little edge of the of the knife. Just get a little roll of paint on it. You want to come up and in this little gap right here, just touch you on some color. Just pull you over a little shadow right there. Work that shadow all the way up, just like so. Slight right in here. And just barely pull it pull that shadow out. And then clean your brush. I mean your knife. And then come back over. Get you another little roll of white. And come right on the back side of that. Put you a, another little, another little peak in here like so, and just work that, work it down in little, very little, little peaks like it, and then get your little edge, and come back up to the top up here, and come in on top of that, and put you a. Highlight up there, and pick you up a little more shadow, and then come under this peak, and just pull it down a little, just like so. And then on these little, these little white ones over here, come in there and pull you a little shadow under them. Basically, everywhere you got a little, a little highlight, just come in under it and pull you a, pull you just a little small shadow out from under it. Just. Keep in mind that you, you're trying to use the same angles. <clears throat> and then you can you can come up here with the with the little the little edge and you can come over here right where that shadow stops and just kind of make you a just kind of make you a complete new complete new peak altogether. With the with the white, then you pick you up a little, 
shadow color under it. You can come up here and work it in just like so. And all this is doing is giving you is giving you several different types of uh, ridges and, and bumps in your in your mountain because anywhere you have a, a highlight if you come behind it with a little bit of shadow it'll automatically turn into a peak and all those little peaks and, and crevices in here that's what defines your that's what defines your mountain because all a mountain is is just it's just little it's little angles I mean that, that's all it is and if you see if you see some uh, shadow somewhere that don't have a highlight come put your highlight back on it just like so just like that just like so and then you can pull the rest of the paint down into the into the darkness see how that worked and then right here you can bring this shadow you can bring it on down a little and just very gently pull it down and tie that right into to that little peak over here just like that and I'm hoping and praying you can see this effect work on the on the camera because it's a uh, it's an effect that I don't really I don't use it a lot because it's a uh, it is so tedious especially when you're trying to teach this is not a real good uh, method to try to teach with but it, it will give you a different a different idea it'll give you something different to try and when it works right it's it's absolutely i mean it, it just it adds so much depth and, and dimension to your painting and all it is is just little light little light pulls and leaving little gaps here and there to where you can run that that shadow in and that's all it is and you can you can look at how how it uh how your mountain looks when you're when you're building it you can say, well, I want to, I want to peak right there. And anywhere you want to peak, all you got to do is add a little highlight, and then come behind that highlight with a little shadow. And if you go up to the highlight and touch it and pull it off, and it brings a little of that white with it, well, that's a good thing, because it just looks like a little of the colors just blending over but as long as you put that that shadow behind it it'll raise up off that canvas for you it'll almost turn 3d for you automatically and you can see how that mountain looks like it comes up and just turns right there I had no idea it was going to do that But now we can come in here and we can take our white again and we'll come into this peak right here and we'll just start gently 
pulling that color down and we'll, we'll try to stay over here along this edge uh, where we already got the shadow and we'll try to bring that highlight right along there to give it another another little crevice in here just like that and we'll leave us a little little area over here and we'll pick us up a little more a little more shadow we'll come right in here just like so Come in here behind this with a little. Just like so. But you can see what I mean by how tedious it is. It's just so. It just takes a little more time. But now if you're doing this at home, you know, you don't you don't have to be in no rush. You can take your time with it and and the more time you spend with it and the easier you are with these the placement of them. Once you go to sculpting out this mountain, man, that thing it, it'll be it'll be gorgeous. like that these things almost look like you can ski down them already all right we'll pick us up a little more white pull it out flat and we'll come right through here and then we'll come back over to our our shadow again. We'll get close to it. Just like so. And we'll come in up here. And you don't you don't have to do this on every on every peak. I mean you don't have to uh, every peak don't have to have a a little slope like that, you know. You, you don't you don't have to you can make this one just like you know uh, any other mountain you've ever done by no means do you have to do them all the same but on this one right here let's uh because this is going to come off here eventually. So let's put this in right now while we're at it. And see, I already see this coming off of this peak right here. Just like so. I'm going to give that a... I'm going to give that its own shadow. And I'm going to turn that completely into a, a different part of the mountain altogether. But before we do that, we'll come up here and we'll fix this one. <clears throat> Last night I was, uh, when I was painting that, that last painting that I just posted, I mentioned, uh, couple painters that are painting on Facebook and YouTube and I left out a guy that, and I feel bad about leaving him out that's why I hate naming names uh, and I hope he don't get upset because I, I did not get his permission to mention his name 
but uh, his name is Brandon Thomas, and Brandon is is a very good painter. If you've never seen him, his uh, he's on YouTube, Brandon Thomas, painting with Brandon Thomas. He is Brandon's real good, and he will he will explain. The painting that he does, he explains it in a way that people can understand it too. I really like I like Brandon's technique. He's a he's a good painter. All right, now we're gonna bring a little shadow under this one. We're gonna make this little peak stand out. Just like so. Alright, we'll pull this down a little more white. Pull it flat as we can get it. Get that little roll of paint on our knife. And we're going to come off the peak up here. We'll come down like so. Before we start closing that in, I'm just going to come back up here and work on this peak here some. Just like that. And then I'll bring this one on down. Just like so. We'll come in here, add us a little shadow. My, <laughs> my voice got real low. I got to talking real low, like that's really gonna help the, the process here. Almost whispering. <laughs> it's, the, it's not gonna make me touch the canvas any softer. It's kind of like when you're driving and you you kind of get lost a little ways or, you know, in the trip you kind of get lost. <laughs> you reach up and turn the radio down like like that's really going to help you, you know. <laughs> or at least I've done that. You may have never done it, but I have. And it, once you uh, once you think about it, you're like, well, what, what good did that do, you know, turning down the radio? That didn't help anything. I really hope this camera is picking up these uh, all these angles and cuts in these mountains because this this thing is I'm telling you it is it is cut up right, I'll come up here just like so. We'll pull that white down. Just like so. Alright, that's a little, a little thicker than I would want it to be. So I'm going to I'm going to go back up here and fix that. Now that's one thing that I really advise against is once you put the color down it's going back into it again because you very seldom ever get lucky enough the second time to to make it right. Every once in a while you can get lucky but, but for the most part you go back into it a second time it's uh, usually not going to work out for you. I like that better. That peak just wasn't speaking to me. It 
Now, I'll go back in there and add just a little bit more shadow right here at the bottom. much better. Yeah, that brought that right out. Alright. Then we're going to come up here and just start pulling the rest of this on out. Just like so. And then I'll come in here and I'll pull this over a little bit. About like so. I'll start down with it. Just like that. And that'll give us a that'll give us a little more dimension right here. Let's make sure we get us a little peak out here. Pull this color on down. Just like so. Alright. Then we'll come back up. Get us a little more shadow color. We'll sneak in here. And add us a little shadow behind it. We'll come down our side here. like so. <coughs> Excuse me. And we'll come over here just like so. And we'll come up behind our peak right here. And we'll start working that down. back up here on our, on our outside edge here. I got off quiet over here, but I didn't. I didn't fall out of the chair. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just working on these angles. Just a real light touch. like so and we will pick us up just a little bit more white and we'll come over here 
And we'll just kind of finish this this bottom out over here. And now we're gonna bring some. We're gonna bring a tree or something in front of this, but just in case it decides it don't want to look like a tree. We'll have it, at least we'll have it filled in to where it can be seen, just like so. That's all we need. Now, if you can see how that, how that did that, it just, it just added so much more So much more depth and, and difference, different uh, areas in the in the mountains where it just and then there's a couple of places you may have to come back up and touch your highlight and if you do, just make sure you touch it very light. You know, just. Don't try to don't try to smear it in there. Just very touch, you know. Just touch it, and let off the canvas. That's all you gotta do. And I really hope that you can see the effect that that gave the mountain. All right, I will wipe off my knife. Got a little something going on right here. Oh, okay. It's just a just a spot. Nothing major. Alright, now we're going to take that two inch brush we used earlier. And we're gonna come up and start tapping up our up our side. Just like we always do. Just following the following the angles. of the mountain. And this is just a light tap. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to diffuse anything here. I mean destroy anything. Just lightly diffusing it. Just real light taps all the way across. And then the same thing over here. Coming up same direction. like so. Alright. And then very, very lightly pull up at the same angle as your mountain. And that'll take out those brush strokes. And that will set your mountain down in, in a little layer of mist down here. Very gently. And you can see how it's real misty at the bottom there. <coughs> now we want to pick us up. We'll save that brush still. We want to pick us up a fan brush. And want to come into the mountain mix color. Bring it out. And we want to pick us up a little of the thalo blue. Bring it out. And a little bit of the alizarin crimson. And mix, mix all these colors right here on the brush. And we want to come up here and do our little tappy trees. Just 
kind of keeping that that mist to where we can still see it because we're going to use that as our that's our separator that's what shows distance here in our in our trees just like so kind of varying the heights here and there we want, we want some tall some short some skinny some fat just a whole bunch of differences going on here that's all we want Okay, we shouldn't have to come all the way out because, like I said earlier, we're going to have some trees over here. So we'll come back over here. And we just want to keep this... kind of straight across here at the bottom or not so much straight but you know kind of level and then up here we just want differences in height and we don't want to kill all that all that mess back in the back because this this painting is going to be I mean from from here on out it's it's basically a simple little painting from here it's And basically the reason for doing it was to show you a different technique on the mountains. Alright, that's about all I need to do here. And then we'll pull this bottom down. Across here. All the way across. like so. That's all we're looking for. Alright, we'll wash that brush. Now, with the two inch brush, we're going to come up here and we're going to start us a line across here. We're going to pull straight down. Straight down. Now this step does work a little easier when you got the liquid white on the canvas because it it shows your line up back here a little better. So you're just gonna have to really keep an eye on it while you're doing it with the liquid clear on here. You just wanna pull straight down, just like so. That's all we're doing. Straight down. Knock a little of that color off the brush. And then very gently come across real lightly. Just like so. To get your reflection in the water. And then pick up your knife 
a little roll of paint on the top of it. You come across here with your water line. Just like you're trying to cut through the canvas. Just keep your straight water line across here. Just like so. Then you can take it and put your couple couple little ripple marks out in your water here just to make it look like it's got a little little light gleaming across here in places about like so now let's clean one of these two inch brushes I mentioned in uh, one of the paintings that here we don't have uh, we don't have the evergreen trees like we normally paint the little zigzag looking trees we, we don't have those type of trees here in Mississippi uh, we have pine trees that grow totally different and to have an evergreen that stands up like those, it have to be a, it have to be almost like a cedar tree. And I tell you what I'm fixing to do. I am going to make up some color. I'm gonna take some dark sienna, going into that same color that we already had, that we just made these trees with, some Van Dyke brown and a good bit of sap green. I want a, I want a real dark color here. But I do want it to have that little, that little hint of, that little hint of green in it. But at the same token, I want it to have that darkness to it too. So when we come back and highlight it, they'll them highlights are really just pop. They'll be real vivid. Okay. Clean off my knife. Now this color may be a little more brown at first. Some of the green should kind of come through. But what we're going to do is I'm going to take a let me see if I can get this palette out. I want to show you how I'm doing this. If you can see it here. This is the pile of paint I just made. I'm going to come across just like just like I'm painting with the brush. And then I'm going to go to wiggling it. Just wiggle it as you're pulling through. Just wiggle it. Now if you do this enough and you get enough paint in these bristles, the more you do it, the more paint you're going to get in them. It'll pull this thing just together sharp as a, sharp as a knife blade. But it takes a lot of paint to hold them bristles together. Right, that's not as sharp as I, as you could use it, but you can see that's that's pretty sharp. Now I'm gonna come up here. First, I'm just gonna touch 
and push. Then we'll start working this working this out at an angle across here. I'm just gonna push it straight out as I come down. Straight out. That's all I'm doing. You see how I'm doing that? I'm not sliding the brush. I'm touching and then applying pressure to the brush, just like so. Put the brush on and apply pressure out. Put the brush on at an angle and just apply pressure out. That's all I'm doing. That's it. Just like so. And as you can see, we got a we got a, a tree shape that uh kind of kind of resembles a cedar tree. And then we'll flatten out the bottom. Now I'm going to tap some color into the brush. This brush has already got a lot of color in it, but the, basically the reason I'm tapping it is to open the bristles back up. See, I got them open back up, and I'm just going to come in here now, and I'm just going to tap it random with the same color. I'm just going to tap it at random, some different little, some different little heights in here. And we'll bring it off the canvas just like so. And I came over just a little past halfway. Very little. Alright, now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to tap some more of this color on. Same color. And I'm going to come up here and with the top of the brush, I'm going to come up here and just start making just little random, little random tree shapes. That's all I'm doing. Just little random tree shapes. You can see how that color's hitting that, hitting that snow behind it, and it's getting all light colored, which is not a big deal because we got to come back with highlights. So it's it's not a it's not a game changer at this point. It's nothing to worry about. We're just gonna tap down all the way down with the same color. And then we're going to bring it in at an angle across here. Just like so. And we'll come in here and put us a couple, a couple little high spots. Don't need many. Just a couple. And we will bring this color down, just like so, straight down, give ourselves some, some shadows in here. Just by pulling straight down. And then over here we'll pull all the way down because that tree's tall. And we'll come back up in here with our color and just add some more color in. Okay. And I'm going to knock a lot of this color out before we drop it in the thinner. 
knock a lot of it out. Because this brush is loaded with color. And if we don't knock some of this color out, we'll be putting new thinner in there in a couple of days. thinner now. Alright, let's pick up some dark sienna and a little, little white and we will marble mix these colors together just like so. We'll pull it out flat And we will do that again because I don't like that that roll of paint I had. Just like this, and I'll come in the middle of our cedar tree. And pull us in a little little trunk across here. Just like so. Then I'll pick up my script liner and uh, okay. I don't see my script liner. Why am I having such a hard time keeping up script liner brushes here lately? Huh. Wait. Alright, well, I'll just use this one. I'll have to find that other one. I really like my other one. It's it's pretty nice. Alright. I'm gonna come up here. And put us in a little tree trunk. Just like so. And we'll put us a couple little arms on here and there. I doubt they show, but we'll put them on there just in case they do. Alright, we'll clean the script line. We'll do this side first. Well, let's see. First thing we got to do is, uh, yeah, we got to do that first. We got to bring us a, a little bank in here. Yeah, that's right. Just pull in some Van Dyke Brown under it. Just like so. And then you come into that same color that we just used for the trees. And just very lightly 
pull out a little of that color. Just like putting snow on a mountain. Just very gently touching the canvas. Letting it take off what it wants. Just very gently. All the way across. That's all we're doing. Very gently. Then we want to give us a little of the white. Pull it up flat, get that little roll of paint on top, and come back along the bottom here with our water line. Just like so. It's like you're trying to cut through the canvas. Alright, now the first brush we're going to pick up is going to be our little one inch oval and we'll put just a little bit of thinner on it. We'll come through our yellow. We'll pick us up a little sap green and a little of that dark color we used to make the trees with to give that Give that green a little bit of darkness. And we load this brush up. And we'll come up to the top and just start lightly tapping. Just lightly tapping. That's all we're doing. If you have a problem making it stick, just pick you up a little thinner, and it don't take much thinner, and then come back into your color, and come back out here, and just very gently. This is a very gentle touch. If you touch too hard, it's going to want to turn the mud on you, and that's not what we're looking for. We're just looking for a real light, light touch. And we just want to keep it in the shape of our tree. Not like so. Just keep your brush loaded. Because if you don't have enough paint on here, you're going to want to push hard. And the first time you do, that's when you're going to that's when you're going to go to making mud. You just want to remember not to kill all the dark. <laughs> Y'all know I had to say that. Because if I don't remind you, I'm going to forget myself. And that's not a that's not a, a, a feel, that's the truth. I will forget. I'm notorious for it. Okay. And we'll come out here. Now the further you go down your tree, you're losing light, so you know, if you want to get some light in there, get it in there before you get down to the bottom. Because about right in here is where you're going to start, you're going to start losing light. And you can see up at the top where it just, 
where it kind of uh, where it kind of kept the the brightness. All right now we can pull down some of the ochre here. A little of the Indian yellow. Mix these colors right on the brush. Because if you get them all brush mixed, it'll it'll just change colors for you. Alright, now we'll come under this one with a color change. And we'll put this tree to where it's sitting in front of that tree. See all those colors that that's happening right there on that on that brush. All right, we'll go back, load it up again, come in here and just lightly tap us on a nice little bush here. Just don't kill all the dark. Let it just kind of fade away as you get close to the bank down there. You can come in here and pick us up a little of the bright red. Bring it over into these colors. And that'll, that'll give you a little, little difference in color. Because the one thing you got to have is you got to have a difference in color. That is to, to show a, a color change or a different, you know, like if you move into a different area, you definitely want to show a color change because it, I don't know how to, I mean, that color changes, it just, it does. It does it for you. All right, and we'll add. I'll add just a little bit of white. Since we're getting out here, we'll add a little highlight out here. Just give us a little brightness. Make it look like the like the sun shining out here. About like so. And we'll pick us up a little more to red. Tap it right on the brush. And we'll build us a little firecracker. <laughs> Just right here. Ooh, isn't that pretty? That is a pretty color. Wow. Just like so. Just don't kill. Oh, you dark. Leave you some dark down there at the bottom. Cause we're gonna come back and put a little. We're gonna come back and put us a little uh, love here. A little grass on our on our bank, and we're gonna do that with a fan brush. And we're gonna come right into. Let's pick us up just a little bit of the thinner. We'll come right into the. Sap green and the yellow together. Mix that color right on the brush. And we'll come right along the bottom and just lightly pull us up a color across here. Just real lightly. Nothing real, nothing real fancy. Just enough to show us that we have something down here. And still maintain our dark color. Just carry that all the way across. Just like so. Bring some of it down on your 
on your bank there to make it look like that grass is coming off the off from under your bushes here and coming down your bank a little. About like so, that's all you need. And you got quite an effective little little island right there. Alright, we'll clean out this brush. And we'll set this brush to the side for a minute. Now I'm going to take a one inch brush and I'm going to go straight into the yellow. Just like we did that other color that we made this tree with. We're doing the same thing, but this time we're going to do it with a one inch brush. We're going to run it through this cad yellow and green mix. And wiggle that brush and get it get it kind of sharp. And remember, the more paint you put in it, the sharper it'll get. Alright, now we want to come up to the middle. And this is just a very little touch. And if you have to use some thinner, use very little. Very little. Work it into your paint. Just don't let your color get away from you. You don't want it solid yellow. You want some green in it. But you don't want it so dark that it's not going to show either. And then come back up and just touch and push in different places here. Just work your way out from the center. Just being careful not to kill all the dark. And that's real important on these trees. Because if you kill all the dark on these trees, you're just going to have a big green blob of something that's supposed to be a tree. But just like that, that's all it is. It's just a... And it's a, it's a simple... Simple little process. It's you, you put that brush on and, and push up. Just don't slide. I mean, it's just you're bending the you're bending the brush is all you're doing. Bending the bristles actually. You're not actually bending the brush. You're just bending the bristles, and then lift it straight back off. That's all we're doing. And you just highlight like that all the way down. And every now and then you get you get that little bright that little bright peak out on the end, and there's nothing wrong with that. All that does is look like the sun's hitting it. And then the further you come down, the more it's gonna get into that dark, and it's gonna go to picking that dark up. And see how it, it got into the brown right here that we had up here for our our uh, tree trunk, which is not a big deal because we're fixing to we're fixing to change colors here. Just like that, we have highlighted our uh, our little evergreen tree that's supposed to look like a cedar. We'll go back up and hit a couple spots here since our trunk messed up on us. And this is just keeping the brush at, at the side and I'm just touching. That's all I'm doing. Just very gently touching. Alright, I'm going to leave that alone. All right, now, the next color I want to go with, 
Alright, first of all, first of all, first of all, I'm going to wash that brush. I'm going to get a clean, dry one inch brush. And I'm going to come right into the yellow ochre. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to pick me up some alizarin crimson. Lizard and crimson, yellow ochre. That makes a real pretty peach color. And I'm going to pick up just a touch of white and bring in that because I want it I want it to pick up a little bit of light right here off of this Just like so. I'm going to bring in a real pretty colored little bush right here. I'll pick us up just a tad bit of thinner. Bring that into our color. We'll come up here and touch right through here. like so and next we will I'm going to pick up a little bit more thinner and I'll knock that off clean it off the next thing I'm going to do is a little Indian yellow right on the same brush Go back up here, pick me up some more white. Cause sitting out in that sun, these these little bushes should look like they're on fire out here. And then we will pick us up a little of the yellow. The cad yellow, bring it in, mix it right in that same color. And just like that, we won't kill all our dark color, but we got just a little variance in color right there. That's all we needed. And even at that, we'll pick us up a little more of the yellow. This time we'll put just a little red in it and get it more towards an orange, kind of an orange effect. And we won't kill all our darks. And we'll bring the red on out. And we'll put us a little firecracker out here on the end, just like so. I tell you what, I like this color. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring a little of this color over here, just to, just to add a little sparkle on a couple of these bushes. They don't have to have it on all of them, but I do want it on a couple of them. About like so, and then maybe down here. Oh yeah, that turned out real pretty. Yeah, I like that. That just pulls your eye right to that. Okay, now, I don't have a clean brush. <laughs> okay, I'm going to clean a brush right quick and then I'm going to go back up here. And I think the only thing I like to like doing is uh, maybe putting a pull on that on that reflection right there I'm not going to get a little out of it get her good and dry I'm going to come up here 
and just very gently pull across very gently very gently just like so and then the colors are so we got a little green that needs to go in here just like so and we had a little of the orange color that needs to go in here and we had a little of the bright color And we had a little bit of red color that could go right in here. Just like so. And then let's bring a little bit out here on our tip. Very little. Yeah. Alright. Then very, very lightly. We're gonna pull these colors down. This is a this is a whisper. I mean, just. That brush is just barely touching that paint. Barely. And then we want to come across real gentle. Real gentle. And just pull those colors right into the water. Just like so. And we will pick up some white. Pull it out flat. Come across here with us a little, just a little ripples here and there. We'll put us a couple out here. It don't take many to be effective. Just enough to to know they're here. That's all. Okay. And then I will pick my scrap liner brush back up again. Get it wet. Come through the red. Bring it to a bring it to a real real good point. Then we'll come right over here and we'll put an H on her. Now I'm going to say that paint's ready for a wall and a frame. Okay, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We got something kind of funky going on right there. What happened here? We're gonna fix that right quick. Take a little of this color and come in here. And fill that in. And give us a little white. I don't have a clue what happened right there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna say that's uh, I'm gonna say that's it. About the only thing we could have done different is come a little, you know, a little more in the middle, maybe on with a highlight or two. But overall, it uh, everything was pretty effective. It it stayed about like we needed it to stay and we can come up here and scratch this in 
couple little sticks and twigs. Now these sticks and twigs are going to go straight back to canvas because there is no there is no liquid white under here for it to show. So these are those are going straight to canvas. All right, we'll call that one done. Uh, I don't know what we'll name it yet. I'll come up with something while I'm loading it. And just like that, we've got us a, another little painting to play around with. Thank y'all so much for joining me. Thank y'all so much for supporting the channel. I can't tell you, I mean really, I say it just about every time, but I, I really can't explain to you how much it means to me. Uh, starting to get more comments. I mean, and that's that's awesome because that lets me, you know, it lets me know that people are paying attention to what's going on. Uh, trying to think, trying to think. Uh, that's basically about it. I mean, just you know, if you if you like it and you haven't subscribed, please do uh, share. Because the more subscribers I get, the more up into the algorithm I'll go, and the more the video will get out. And like I've said a million times, I'm not the best out there, but you know the techniques I use work for me, and uh, I hope they work for y'all. If there's anything that that you see I might can help you with, feel free to ask. I'll do all I can. Uh, that's basically it. So, I love y'all. God loves you more. Have a very blessed night.